What up, Ho Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again, and I'm welcoming today. Stop in the name of love. Okay, you're gonna hate this before you break my heart so gonna... again. It's our anniversary soon, so be ready for anniversary jokes. How's that? That was great, but yeah. also you're gonna hate this. Why? So, I love that. I, I did great. In the bathroom. Put little flashing lights on. I was brushing my teeth. Uh huh. And I was like, man, what if my husband started shooting vids without me? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I would burst in and be like, stop in the name <laughs> of love. Like when you just did your brushing yes. teeth just now? Yes. Like this very instant, not like a couple days ago. No, like just now. So my wife and her friend, Dr. D, have hive mind. Hive mind! It's it's a thing. They, yeah. She probably has a little antenna that perked up <laughs> the second my wife yelled hive mind, and it pinged her, and she probably just woke up and was like, hive mind, and then went back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? And if it's if it's infectious, I want to cut it out as soon as possible. I think it's too late for you, I would Brody. like to gouge. You know when people be like, you just cut off the arm, the venom flap <laughs> through you. And the guy's like, he's already dead. Cut it off anyways. <laughs> and then they cut it off, and then like two hours later, he dies anyways. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would. That's how I want to go out. Fighting my last breath. I think it's too late for you. Cursing the heavens. <laughs> but yes. That is exactly. Like, you started doing that, and I was like, did he? Did I? <laughs> did I talk about this again? Did I? Anyway. So we are here for the Frank, the most questionable animal facts guy that we know. Uh, yeah. But he's still dear to our hearts for some reason. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> what? He's what? Dear to our hearts. He's what? Dear to our hearts. Maybe I should just go stag for this video. Yeah, that's a better one. That's better. <laughs> you got it. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. I'm really excited about this video. It's called True Facts, Fish That Suck. I don't know what he's referring to. I'm a little afraid. Well, I mean like actually what the video's actually about. Yeah, I really don't know where what we're in for. I'm really at a loss. Well, we will see what he wants us to see <laughs> and probably what we don't want to see. And maybe more. <laughs> Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. This episode sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Welcome to the True Facts Animal Awards. Ooh. Celebrating yeah, animals he got with awards. Up. And then he tried to swallow them up. You a little slow though. There's homie. this lab called the Wainwright Lab at UC Davis. They're a bit obsessed with fish skulls. Not in a dirty way. I mean, maybe in a dirty way, but they don't what? talk about that on the website. I mean, that might be what this interested in joining us link leads to. <laughs> anyway, they have a bunch of videos of a variety of fishes eating. Let's take this one for example. We'll okay. stop it here and I want you to imagine what will happen next. Now you might imagine it like how a tuna do. Pretty straightforward, the tuna how opens tuna its do. mouth and then sort of swims into what it's eating. Or you might imagine something closer to this moray eel. Same sort of thing, the jaw opens up, but in this case it bites down. But look at this one. Instead of the jaw opening on a simple hinge, this looks more like someone setting up one of those pop-up tents on the beach. And the more you look at these in slow motion, the weirder it gets. And this is because most fish suck. They also use suction to feed. You know, the once I saw this in yeah. slow motion, right. I now realize that I have definitely seen this before. Okay. Like, for sure. I never owned fish. Um, it wasn't my fault that I didn't own fish. It was my cousin's fault that I didn't own fish because what he... What your cousin have to do with this? So my cousin got fish, right? And he was super excited about the fish. And he, that you know, everyone else took care of the fish for him, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, he was an idiot. And he decided one day that he was going to season his fish. Oh my God. The live fish? Yes. So let me just set the scene. <laughs> He's at home staring at the fish. Mm -hmm. He sees the seasoning cabinet and goes, the food channel says I must do. I think it was like more confusion about what the, between the food shaker and the seasoning shaker. Ah, like he just kind of see people shake, shake stuff in, in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he didn't scoop the fish out, put it on a plate, pin it down with little toothpicks and then season it with salt and pepper while laughing maniacally? 
Because that's where I was going. No. no. Boom! That's what I was heading to. Okay. No, no. He just... He just seasoned it with, like, lemon pepper mm -hmm. and Cajun seasoning and stuff. That's a lot less exciting. Now, fish skulls are made out Jesus. of an elephant shitload of parts. One thing these parts can do is rotate and move to expand the volume inside the head. This expansion oh creates lower pressure and suction. And listen, these fish can do a good bit of sucking. Whoa. Here's one where they tied the food to something that measures force. And you can watch the fish slowly get more and more pissed off. <laughs> now, it can get even more complicated because some of these fish have a sort of double-jointed lower jaw. Okay. And that can result in some pretty strange movements. Like this one here. <laughs> oh, some fish my create lower pressure by elongating their jaws. And in that category, there's none better than the sling jaw wrasse. It can extend its jaw an additional 65% oh. of its head length. That's crazy. Now, most of these oh fish eat their prey whole, which means that after they suck the prey into their mouth hole, they need to get it into their esophagus and tum tums before it swims back out. For right. that, they have a friggin' second set of jaws. They ah! have two mouths? They have two mouths? There's a joke in there somewhere. But I can't think of how to make it. It doesn't. When you see the graphic, <laughs> this is not sexual at all. Zero parts of this are fun. Somebody is into that. So they have oral jaws and then the what? Pharyngeal jaws. Pharyngeal? Yeah. For your pharynx. Does that mean is that in the back of your throat, your pharynx? I think so. Bro, that's terrifying. Well, it sounds like it's something that would be in the back of your throat. These pharyngeal jaws seem to help get the prey down the chute. And like my penis. All right. They're even more important. I just. What? We just. I had to take a break. I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do it with the thing on the screen. You it was can't. weird. It was just weird with it on the screen. I to not see it. Penis goes in the back of your throat. That's not appropriate. Hey, yo. This is a PG-13 channel. How many times do I have to tell you? And they're even more important for the fish that don't really use suction. Like that moray eel we saw earlier. They have some oh, serious pharyngeal jaws. It's right. terrifying. It's like there's a fish inside the fish. If you look close, you can see it in action, pulling the food back and towards the throat. Here's another shot of it. It's like a hand comes out. Now, while the Slingjaw Wrasse wins the over-the-top award in the category, there's another wrasse that's sucking adorable. The Tube-Lip Wrasse is a bit more understated. Look at it giving that coral little kisses. But the thing about coral is that they are cynodarians, like jellyfish, and they're covered in tiny little stinging cells. These mm -hmm. nematocysts are little spring-loaded poison-filled harpoons. So to be able to give a coral a kiss requires some special lips. On the left are the lips of a typical non-coral feeding wrasse. On the right. right are the very puckered and kissable lips of the tube lip wrasse. These lips casting. fold in on themselves over and over again like the gills of a mushroom. And those indentations are lined with goblet cells. Okay. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I do not like that. <laughs> know what they make? Mucus. It's like having oh. a chapstick built into your lip parts. Oh, now, so there's he doesn't another fish chapstick. that likes to live among nematocysts filled stinging tentacles, Actually, the clownfish. And guess what? They're covered in mucus. That's right. In real That's life, right. little yeah, Nemo was that. a snot boy. In both these cases, the mucus seems to protect the fish from those stinging cells. Yep. But in the case of the tube lip wrasse, those puckery lips and the mucus allow the fish to create a tight seal on the coral so it can suck. And you know what it's after? It seems to like to eat the mucus that coral make. This really? is a special corner of underwater okay, pornography. There's a lot of but happening. before we get to the fish that really know how to suck, let's look at the category cheapest escape room. If you want okay. some inspiration in your life, I've got the beetle for you. Right here, Regim Bardia Attenuata. We'll call him Reggie. I'm sorry. Can we try again? I was in fish mode. Yeah. Now I gotta go to beetle mode. I was gonna say, I was not ready for beetles. Well, let's do it. All I'm right. in. I'm in, but I just need We're to... locked in. Hold on. Look. We're locked in. Yeah. You locked in? Well, no, we go this way. Right here. Lock okay, in that Okay, we're way. locked in. Look at me. Look at you. Look at me. There's Reggie right... Oh, shit. Well, that's a real... Oh, yeah, right we saw there. this. I mean, something like that happens to you. Most people, they just give up. But... And then... <laughs> Now, Reggie, let's have a look see to see what he gets up to. Uh, That's uh, right, crawled his way right out of a frog's ass. Puts things into perspective, doesn't it? And I tell you, that frog's a bit nonchalant considering what just happened. I'd be chalant, I'd be very fucking chalant if a beetle just crawled out my ass. Anyway, yeah. it turns out that Reggie can go right through a frog. 
Oh, now you notice. <laughs> they included a picture of what Reggie's Google Maps looks like. What the hell? The caption. <laughs> it's a yeah, hypothetical crazy. escape route. <laughs> Were there other options? <laughs> anyway, it turns out that Reggie's pretty damn good at clawing his way through the pipings of a frog. And you know what's wow. at the far end? A sphincter. He'd come all that way, and now he's got to tickle open a sphincter, or however he does it. Then he finally gets out, thinks his day's getting better, but then it turns out there's someone out there got the whole thing on video. <laughs> Explain <laughs> that to you, but whoa, we're gonna have to slow that down. <laughs> he almost ate it again. Look at his reaction. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> nope, nope. Now, is it because he's covered in mucus? Is that why he's is that what we're getting at here? My love, I think he just wanted to show us the clip again. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Okay, so mm -hmm. you know how I was watching Meat Canyon? Mm -hmm. And then I watched it with Dr. D. Yeah. And then Dr. D is the one who pointed out that Meat Canyon clearly has a vor fetish. Right. And I was like, what? No, he just continuously makes disgusting right. videos where people and, get eaten and, and are really into it. makes a lot of fucking sense now. <laughs> Deeply. And so, do you think mm -hmm. that maybe mm -hmm. the Frank has a little bit of a poop fetish? Dude, just a just a just a, just a smidge. Dude, just I think he's just, not to be all up in your bedroom business. I just think that he's gone so deep down the rabbit hole. He just sees it everywhere. <laughs> he's like nobody's talking about it. We right. have to discuss it. But there was no reason for that video to be in this video. We might have just missed it. He might have said something about mucus or something, or maybe just missed the editing where he discussed like why it was relevant. No, something. I'm gonna blame the Frank on this one. That's not an us problem, that's a him problem. Okay. Oh, right. A number of fish use suction to hold on to things. Some yeah. use their mouths, seems like the I've obvious choice. Fish. Others, like the mudskipper or leaping blenny, have fused pectoral fins, That's which they can cool. use like a little suction cup. The remora, however, took this Ew. idea of fin modification and Ew. really swam with it. In this case, it wasn't the pectoral fins, but walking. rather the dorsal fin on top. And apparently, you can make whatever the f you want by modifying a fin. Sure. Lastly, the top of the Ramora's Whoa. head looks a bit like Evolution stepped on it with a medium tread hiking boot. But with it, they can attach That's themselves true. to whatever the hell they want to. Oh, this suction pad. these are the fish on the bottom of the other fish. Okay. Yeah. It's basically made out of two parts. There's this outside fleshy lip oval, which looks a bit like a suction cup. And then mm -hmm. inside, you can see these rows of things that are called lamellae. If you look closer at the lamellae, you can lamellae. see that they're covered by thousands of these little blunt spikes. They almost look like the teeth of a comb. At rest, they all sort of lie flat against the fish. But they can be rotated so they stick out at an angle from the remora's eh. back. Eh. Watch as this remora attaches to the glass. You can see those thousands of spikes angling and making contact with the surface. Oh, you can. All of this keeps the remora from sliding as oncoming water pushes it backwards. Of okay. course, if they want to slide, they can just pull back those little spikes. Now, in order to stay on the surface of the host fish, mm -hmm. they need some help from that fleshy lip. When the remora attaches, it pushes up against the host and expels water from underneath that disc. Then those lamellae rotate and the spikes push on the surface. And all of this creates lower pressure Damn. and suction. But the seal mm. has to remain tight. Luckily, remoras are dickheads. You see, they have these blood vessels that run along that fleshy lip. And they have a sort <laughs> of valve that can stop the blood from exiting. And by doing that, they can make that outside seal more rigid. So the seal becomes hard on the outside. The outside, the outside fleshy lip part mm -hmm. gets hard. Mm -hmm. Then the inside part is just creating like like interlocking things to lock onto the thing. Like more pressure, skin. yep, and it moves water around to make like a suction. Okay, that makes, that's very confusing. And it also lets it release that pressure and move it around. So if it wants to move, it can use it like a foot and just like move around the flat yeah. surface. Okay. Yeah, extremely weird. See, dickhead. And if they want to let go, they just take a cold shower, think of kittens, relax that head boner and peel up from the front. <laughs> Anyway, they're constantly making little adjustments, attaching and reattaching. Look at these ones riding on a whale. Even when they're moving this fast, they can lift off the surface <laughs> for a moment. At the right height, water moves more quickly in the gap between the remora and the whale. Okay. And the ensuing lower pressure pulls the remora oh, no. back to the surface oh, no. of the whale. It's called the Venturi effect. And oh. quite frankly, it looks fun. <laughs> Whoa! But the thing about <laughs> hitchhiking on whales is you're going where they're going. And they go down. This remora on the right was taken down to 1,400 meters. Damn. You don't go down there, you fucked. Luckily, remoras know what parts of the whale have the lowest drag, and that's where they hang out for the ride. Now, overall, most of these remora host relationships are win-win. 
The Remoras take care of some parasites, and in return they might get a fish at feeding time, they get their travel for free, and the host offers some protection against the Remoras' predators. There's a big asterisk on that statement. We'll get back to that in a second. But listen, sometimes the host is just not that into it. Might want some alone time. And sometimes those Remoras attach themselves in awkward places. Like this one right here, it's near the genital slit. And I think we can all agree you don't want a fish on your genital slit. So there's I don't. Act- <laughs> to be clear. If this kind of stuff happened to humans, we'd have a lot more complaints. A paper on the physics of how dolphins spin to get remoras off. Not like that's get cool. them off, but like remove them from their body. Anyway, ah, that's about that asterisk. If you want protection from predators, you have to choose the right host. I mean, this right. one may look like an idiot, but at least that oh, host has poison in it. I mean, the whale shark, you might be thinking, well, at least it's big. But if your predator's a f***ing bird, they're not going to do s*** for you. I mean, you're basically on a whale-shaped Dang! plate. But look how hard that cormorant has to work. And that is why oh the remora wins, the fish that sucks the most. Is it? Oh, oh my god! a category, how to get your hole okay. stuffed. Sir. Yeah, okay, yeah. My guy. Yeah, my dude. The, the suck. Broskies. The stuff. You got to work with me here, bro. It's the last Come section, on. probably. It's, it doesn't get any dirtier than this, at least. <laughs> oh, stop it. This right here is an Egyptian vulture. It's quite Ooh. a striking bird, isn't it? With the white feathers and the face that has holes in it. <laughs> Once in a while, these vultures, both males and females, like to get gussied up a bit. What they do is they find a mud puddle and get all intimate with it. Look at that, right up in there. And this mud stains their front feathers red. It's thought that what they're doing is basically changing their looks by applying a cosmetic. Maybe as a status symbol or something to do with mating. And these birds aren't alone. The Japanese crested ibis does something similar. Normally they're quite white with a touch of the pinky. It's ibis? The Japanese crested ibis does. That's what he says, ibis. I thought it was ibis. He also says do. So, you know. (laughs) Something similar. Normally they're quite white with a touch of a pinkish hue. But during mating season, many of their feathers turn to a gray. In this case, it's not a mud bath. They actually secrete a tar-like substance from their Ooh. face parts. And then That's they smear hilarious. it all over the rest of themselves. Oh, and you okay. make your own cosmetics. Like using what comes out your pimples for moisturizer. That's now, I know what you're going that, yeah. to say about the greater flamingo. That pink comes from what they eat. And it does. Yeah. The shellfish they eat have carotenoids in them. And when ingested, I those are incorporated so into their feathers. But there's a problem. The Boy, sun bleaches stink. those feathers. You don't want that. You don't want to be the pale flamingo during mating season. Luckily, like most birds, they're equipped with this little nipply thing back near the base of their tail. It's called a uropageal gland, and it secretes an oil. And you've seen birds use it when they preen, rub their beak on their little oily nipple and spread it around to get their feathers right. Well, in the greater flamingo, that oil also contains carotenoids. So during mating season, flamingos use it like a rouge. Touch up those faded feathers and stay sexy. Just a quick note, remember that vulture that takes the mud baths? Well, yeah. its beak is yellow, also because of carotenoids. But unlike the flamingo who gets it from a raw bar, the vultures get their carotenoids by eating ungulate shit. Anyway, spotless Thanks. starlings are next <sighs> level with the makeup. Appreciate and they it. they start at quite a young age. You see, when the mother starling comes back to the nest with a fat worm, this is what she sees. <laughs> it's a little disturbing, actually. The mother has to figure out which hole to drop it in, and ideally chooses the ones that have the best chance at survival. All right, so here's what happens when mommy's away. You can see the babies are preening themselves almost before oh, they have anything to preen. Really? Look at this. See that tube? It's filled with what a science hippie collected out of the baby's uropageal gland. And That's... if you cotton swab around the baby's oh. mouth, guess what comes oh. off? Yellow lipstick. And what's more, huh. the shade of the lipstick seems to correspond to the baby's health, which gives okay. the mother bird a clue on which hole to stuff. See, stuffing holes isn't always dirty. That wasn't that bad, I have to say. I mean, it's way better than the hippo video. I will never Listen, forgive you for the hippo video. I now know that swamps are also shit slurries. And I will never not know that fact. That little swampy area they live in, oh, that's like that mossy part, on, that on. top froth is Don't, shit. Come on, you eat the... That's what I'm saying. Do you want cold foam? No, so you're a bad person. You're a bad person. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. If you have any more fun facts about sucking fish, nice. then, you know, keep them to yourself. Thanks. <laughs>
Other than that, peace. I hope this gets it. It's getting lit.